Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back. Welcome. It's been such a long time. Welcome to Real Macroeconomics and Investing. Welcome to uh, TradingView YouTube and uh, uh, Twitter. How are you guys doing? And to my subs, of course. All right. So what's going on here? It's, it's been a long time. It's something is starting to happen here. So we're going to talk a little bit about cryptos. All right. I posted, uh, where is it? This one. I posted this today about eight hours ago. And I'm like, oh, this is bad juju. Uh, and it's starting to break down here. Okay. Now, I want to give you a little bit more color on this. Because if you kind of zoom out on this one, uh, it doesn't look that good. All right. So what do we have here? This is the total. I, I'm just going to talk about the total crypto market uh, here. Maybe some individual off the wall kind of cryptos but anyway um so what's going on here so you have a one two three up fair enough came back down broke this is what i call a structure below a structure when this starts to form and it starts building that pressure that's usually a bad sign okay that usually means there's going to be another move to the downside and if you do, you know, uh, wave analysis, that kind of makes sense uh, because um, w w what you're kind of looking at here is a, is a great big bear flag. So this is a wave one. This is a one, two, three up, right? It's a bear flag. Well, naturally, this usually resolves to the downside. Well, what does that mean about all the other cryptos? Well, that's not good, right? Obviously. Um, now... Could you get one more up? Sure, that's possible. Uh, and, and let me kind of get the right timing here, All right? So it's, it's a nice, simple little setup. Uh, and that's what we're looking for, right? We do all this analysis, this kind of bare knuckle charting, as I call it. Uh, it's, it's not Elliott waves or anything else. It's just my own creation. So basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to manage risk. And we want to find nice key areas that we can identify and say, okay, well, this is a key area here. Um, and, and it could go either way here, potentially, right? Always, that's always the case. So if it starts to build that pressure and starts to break down, well, you know, you can short it, you can take profits now and, and, and you know, not get hurt. Um, that, that's, always <laughs> that's always a good thing, right? You don't want to get hurt. Sorry, I was coughing. Anyway, um, so yeah, it, it can either trigger a short or you can take profits now. And and if you get a nice move, you know, from a failed move comes a fast move. That's the other saying in the opposite direction that if this fails and it starts to pump, well, guess what? You can re-enter somewhere here, right? Uh, how, how much can this run? Well, nobody knows. I, I, I never know when a wave is going to end, okay? But... Uh, the burden of proof right now is on the bulls. They want to be able to maintain this structure here, right? You got to be able to maintain it, and, and it's going to take a lot of energy to do that. So um, you could potentially get a nice little move, maybe all the way to the top here, about 1.26 trillion, uh, somewhere up here, somewhere here. I, I don't know when it reverses, but if it does give you one more up, you kind of end up back in the same place you kind of end up in that area where you're again challenging the structure so you know it is what it is nobody has a crystal ball i certainly don't but i do like these key areas this nice little risk rewards see how i'm going to manage it right uh take profits or, or short or or if it breaks here go long or whatever the case may be but overall when you look at the the overall picture if this starts to break, it could potentially be bad juju as a wave three could come. And a wave three can be ferocious. Okay. Um, if and when wave three does come, well, guess what? Now you have a one, two, three down. You start getting a hook. Guess what? Now you have a nice little bull channel. Right? It may stay in here for a while, but eventually it will correct in this, in this direction. So for me personally, I've been very disciplined. Uh, I'm out. I don't own any cryptos right now. But 
Um, I would love to see this wave three down. I'll, I'll tell you that. Because then it's going to give me a nice, nice, nice entry when it comes here. And if you're following me, you'll see it. Uh, I'll do it live and tell you all about it. And, hey, you know, you should go out and buy cryptos, whatever. And then we could see a nice, huge move to the upside. And, uh, you know, but here, eh, <laughs> playing with fire over here, you know. Um, uh, another little telltale sign is that when it broke this um, this area here, the move was kind of weak. You know, on a percentage ba basis, maybe you know it, it was it was nice. It was a nice little move, 21%, whatever, to the upside. Okay, that's fine and whatever. But it didn't really do what it was supposed to do. Um, so that's another indication that there's weakness here, right? I mean, price says it all, right? Uh, so, you know, maybe maybe we can get a bigger move to the upside if it breaks here. I, I don't know. Maybe it doesn't stop here. Maybe it just keeps going. Then that's a different story. We, we'll talk about it then. But for right now, just be really cautious in these cryptos, okay? All right. Uh, what else? Uh, let's talk a little bit about Matic. I've been, talk I've been warning about Matic since... February 13. That's a long time. And, and you know, to be fair, it never triggered. The initial um, post didn't trigger until later on. And we'll talk about it here. But let's look at it, right? It's a, it's a double top. You got a head and shoulders that's, that's forming here. This is a bearish structure. You have the one, two, three up, right? You got, you got this, this channel in here that's eventually going to correct. So it, it's self-evident. You kind of know it's going to happen. You just don't know when it's going to happen. So in this particular case, right, it popped, right? See that? See that pop? And people are like, oh, it didn't age well. Well, what do you mean it didn't age well? It never broke. So how could it age? <laughs> it's got to break. You know what I mean? It's got to break. If it doesn't break, then it's not triggered. So you can't tell me it didn't age well. Uh, you know, when you're posting these charts, you, you have to make a decision, long or short. Well, you know, the overall structure is bearish. Doesn't mean you can't have one more up. So, you know, <laughs> I get a little, you know, whatever. Anyway, so uh, finally it did come back down as expected. And guess what? It failed. Popped, dropped. Did it end there? No. I kept uh, bearish on it. All right, and here we are. Here we are today. So if you would have took the, the short here, or at least you took profits, you avoided all this disaster. Or you made a lot of money to the short side. And I gave you updates on this, right? February 16th, February 21st. I said, okay, there's one more. Okay, so here's the break now, right? You can see it here, the arrow. I moved it up. Why? Because it never triggered here. So when I get this, I didn't age well. It's like, whatever. Um, and then it came back down. And here here it is, right? Here's where it came back down. The arrow's still there. And guess what? Gave you another little update, right? That broke. And then it kept breaking. And then I said, all right, we're going to get one more up. We'll get one more up. And then we'll resume the downtrend. Because this, this needs to correct. And sure enough, guess what? It went up and came back down. Wow, look at that. Magic. Uh, and that was March 26th and then May 7th. I, I said this is bad juju, right? So here's here's what happened, right? We had this little downtrend. It went incredibly, as I call it, bearish. It popped. We got that little pop out of this structure here, right? And then resumed this downtrend. And then it continued on down. Oops, what happened? Oop, oop, oop. Right, and then it continued on down. I said, "Look, there's a bear flag," and I warned again about the bear flag. Well, the bear flag turned out to be a little bit bigger of a bear flag, but sure enough, it resolved to the downside. And uh, and here we are today. Okay, here we are today. It's uh, a nice little move all the way to the downside. Kept you in the trade. Gave you the live live updates um, uh, accordingly. I also talked about clean harbors. Look at this. Beautiful little setup. January 22nd, I said, look, this looks bullish. 
Beautiful little move to the upside. All right. And that continued on up. Wonderful move. All right. 156. That's a nice, nice move. Um, OPEC. Well, let's talk about OPEC. Oil, right? Oh, OPEC cuts, OPEC cuts. <laughs> OPEC does not cut to push prices higher. OPEC doesn't, doesn't have a choice, right? Because the demand is not there. That's why they're cutting. They're not cutting to try to boost prices, although I keep hearing that, well, that's why they're boosting, uh, they're cutting uh, oil so they can, you know, boost prices higher. No, no. OPEC is telling you that they're sensing a slowdown in global demand. And they're cutting. Initially, they're going to cut once. Then they'll see how that goes. If global demand keeps uh, shrinking, well, guess what? They're going to cut again. Everybody gets excited. They're like, oh, yeah, OPEC is cutting. It's going to limit the supply and push prices up. No, no, that's not the way it works. And then they came out again. And guess what? For the third time, the OPEC, OPEC cut again. And each and every time, price has fallen. Okay. So put that, you know, in your in your war chest, and you know you can see it. It, it went as low as I think below 69. It went below 69. So a lot of people, you know, <laughs> they don't understand how this stuff works. Again, I understand they're not macroeconomists, but not you know whatever. But be careful with that stuff. The bricks, oh the bricks and the bricks. Well, guess what? The bricks have been performing horribly. And they're not going to stop performing horribly. Bricks are not, they're a non-event. They're silly. People that are going to tell you, oh, you know, bricks are going to replace the U.S. That's not going to happen. Forget about that. Um, what else? Oh, I forgot. Solana. Here's Solana. Let's talk about Solana. All right. So Solana had a good opportunity, had a good chance to start to break out. All right. So I'm going to post that. It's a key area here. Right, this is a key area. It has a good opportunity to start to break out. You had a, a nice little bullish structure. It kind of broke out here. It, it, it could have run some more. And guess what? Remember, these key areas can go either way. Okay, and that's why I post them. So what happened? Boom! Right back down. Didn't make it. Beautiful. The trade long never triggered. Okay, so that's good. You, this is the these are the key areas that you want to be sitting there observing if it breaks out if it gives you a nice little structure right let's say this continued on up and started doing something like this right take it to the upside but what's the total crypto market doing overall you know what you gotta you gotta look at the overall market is there risk on risk off you know there, there's other factors to consider but anyway this had an opportunity to break break out it reversed no harm, no foul. All right? So don't come and tell me, oh, this didn't age well. <laughs> right? It, it, it aged beautifully. <laughs> it did exactly what it was supposed to do. All right, let's talk about the Turkish Lira. Uh, you know, this guy, Warren Mosler, he's a father of MMT, whatever. Oh, yeah, Erdogan is doing it right to lower interest rates because it's going to firm up the currency and it's going to drive down inflation. Eh, wrong. And this is why you shouldn't... <laughs> You shouldn't listen to these MMTers because the, what, what they're saying is just gibberish. Nothing that they say ever comes true, okay? Especially from Mosler. Uh, so what happened here? Well, a couple of things happened here. First of all, they started to borrow um, foreign re foreign reserves so they can defend the currency, and that's why the currency here was not was not pushing to the upside. So what does that mean? Well, if I have uh, euros and dollars and Canadian dollars and Australian dollars and whatever, and and, uh, and foreign investors who bought Turkish lira bonds, they want to get out, they want to have access to those dollars, right, at a certain price. And and if 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 the Turkish central bank has them, they can defend the currency by giving them back euros, dollars, pounds, whatever. Okay, and then they won't sell off the currency. However, when the foreign reserves are depleted, there's nothing left. So what are investors going to do? They're going to sell the Turkish lira uh, at any price. Turkish lira starts to collapse and the dollar starts to strengthen. Okay, 
It's, it's simple. And so I hear a lot of people there, oh, I'm a Forex trader, but yet they don't understand the most basics of, um, of Forex trading. So uh, let's take a look and see what happened. Kaboom. Look at that. They ran out of reserves. So, of course, it's going to go straight up. Okay. What do you think is going to happen to inflation? Of course, it's going to rise. The currency just got destroyed. You are literally watching hyperinflation uh, in real time. That's what's going on here. Let me try to explain this in another way. I'll let you take a little sneak peek at my US dollar Japanese yen chart. All right. So, uh, what started happening here? Japan was a, a net exporter for the longest of time. Uh, COVID hit, uh, the recovery, they turned them into a net importer rather than a, an exporter. Uh, also, their private debt started to rise, so they started to have currency problems. Everybody runs around and says, oh, yeah, but look, you know, uh, they can print so much and they don't have inflation. <laughs> Be careful with that because, again, I'm going to remind everybody that Japan is a net exporter. In fact, Japan owns the most amount of uh, dollar treasuries, okay, out of any nation in the world. So they are they have vast amounts of foreign reserves. However, uh, if you're going to defend the currency, you're going to start to deplete those foreign reserves, okay? I think they have something like 1.3 trillion, 1.4 trillion dollars. Anyway, what's my point? Well. The Japanese government allowed the currency to devalue, okay? Um, once they got panicky at 150, they started to intervene. And you can see the intervention here. They intervene randomly, trying to, um, to squeeze the shorts, okay? What happened? They stopped intervening. And what happened to the uh, the dollar versus the Japanese yen? It started to go back up again. Okay, and this is the problem that uh, you can intervene a little bit here and there. You can, but but it's, it cannot be a way of life, especially when you're a net importer, not a net exporter anymore, and you're not going to be accumulating more and more foreign reserves, right? So um, dangerous stuff here for Japan. So what does this have to do with crypto? Well, it's got a lot to do with it. If the dollar is to start to strengthen, what do you think is going to happen to crypto? Crypto is going to go down. If the dollar is strengthening against the Japanese yen, which is a very large component of the dollar index, okay, that's not good news for crypto guys. Okay, and that's the benefit of understanding macroeconomics. OK, uh, that you start to realize these things and you start to make better decisions and, and you start to become more profitable. So getting back to this um, uh, Turkish Lira thing, OK, uh, the writing was on the wall. And that's why I started warning about it back in April four, on, on, on uh, April 4th. OK, uh, the latest one was June 7th, obviously. Right. But uh, you can see again. A nation without foreign reserve is going to uh, implode their currency. And again, easy money to be made. All right. So uh, that's it for this video. We talked, uh, you know, about cryptos. My overall uh, feeling about the overall stock market, I think this is a bullshit move to the upside. I think people should be really cautious. Okay. I could be wrong, but uh, that's all I'll say about that for now. Uh, I finally reached uh, 2,800 uh, followers. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. That's super awesome. Um, take good care, and I'll talk to you guys soon. All right? Be careful out there. Bye-bye.